Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part seven of my series on the closing mill. And this one is entitled, The Speeds and Feeds and Controls of the Machine. A couple of updates here before I start talking about the machine itself. My neighbor came over, Tommy, about an hour ago and brought me a hundred foot of number 10-3 course. Now, I don't like the looks of, the, of those plugs, especially this one. And 10-3 is really heavier than what I need. This is just a, a super duty extension cord. Uh, some people think falsely that the higher the voltage is, that the larger the wire is that you need. But the number 12 that I'm currently using with the yellow extension cord is quite sufficient, but I've got this as a backup. In a previous video, I mentioned that I have this tool holder that is uh, ER32, and I said I do not have a, a wrench for that. And uh, very quickly, uh, the man that runs Cape Cod CNC, that's out in Massachusetts, sent me along a wrench. He said he had two of them, and that will fit quite nicely. So thank you, Cape Cod CNC. And then finally, I was in the need of a small milling machine vise to serve on this machine. So, you may recall that at my meet and greet, my good friend Wayne Fitch was in attendance, and there I am pictured with him. Well, he's down uh, from Texas Way, and he said, well, I'll, I'll swap you. So he swapped me for the Hegner saw. Do you remember that orange Hegner saw that I came across? He said, I'll swap you that for a four-inch Kurt Angle Lock vise. And I said, well, sure. So he loaded that up, went back to Texas, and about three weeks later, this arrives in a bomb-proof uh, crate that he made. So this is going to serve me nicely. I need to get some keys for it so that it'll fit in the uh, keyways. And he even sent along a repair kit for it. I don't know if it needs it, but there are the thrust bearings and everything that uh, is necessary for repairing one of these, and it came with the handle as well. So I thank you, Wayne, ever so much. Remember, Wayne is one of Palmer's friends. Palmer Moynihan, the tall Texan. The first thing I want to talk about on the closing is the adjustment of the spindle speeds which is really a very simple thing but let me show you the drive and all of that but I need to take the guard off and then I, I really want to get that back on and, and bolt it down for good never work with the guard off safety first the spindle speeds are controlled by a variable speed drive and there's both a direct drive and a back gear and you can see that the range is anywhere between 360 and 2000 RPM for direct drive and between 52 and 280 for the back gear drive. So let me show you how that works. When you adjust the speed, operate this control only when the motor is running. It's clearly marked there. And all you need to do to, is to turn the switch on and move it in the uh, clockwise direction to increase the speed. counterclockwise to slow it down. Now that's in direct drive. The machine is running at a slow speed. Watch the lower pulley as I increase the speed. You see, it's simply a variable pitch pulley. Now watch the upper pulley as I do the same, and it is uh, just spring operated. The lower one has a hydraulic uh, cylinder on it. Sometimes these are called a Reeves drive. Stay away from those belts, they'll kill you. And there again is the little hydraulic reservoir. 
and I put hydraulic oil in there. For a slower speed range, we put it in back gear. So in order to do that, I'm on the back side of the machine. Now pull out the coupling device. You see that frees the spindle from the pulley. This is the back gear uh, engagement wheel and we have here a little bit of a release, a safety release, so in order notice we're out of back gears now, so I'll move the lever to the right and move this around and you may have to turn the spindle a little bit to get it to engage and you see now we are in back gears. And you will see how much more slowly the spindle speed is. To repeat myself now, when you're in back gears you have uh, variable speeds between 52 and 280 RPM. In the direct drive it's anywhere between 360 and 2000 RPM. And of course it's just the reverse to take it out of back gear. Move the lever, turn the wheel until it says out and you'll feel it lock in and of course you have to push in the coupler like that. Now we're back in direct drive. The back gears are really very similar to what we have in a lathe but you cannot see any of them. They're inside of the housing here. But sometimes it's necessary to lock the spindle so you can tighten or loosen the tool that's in the spindle and if that is the case put it into back gears temporarily even though you're not going to operate at that speed that will lock the spindle for you. This is the gearbox that allows you to change the speed for the longitudinal table feed and there are a total of 12 different feeds feed rates I should say anywhere from 0.44 inches per minute up to nine and a half inches per minute the feed rate remains constant regardless of what the spindle speed is. For instance, if you're at nine and a half inches per minute, it doesn't matter whether your, your cutter is uh, turning at 50 RPM or 1000 RPM, the feed is going to be the same. Why? Because this pulley here runs off of another pulley directly on the motor, or I should say this belt here runs off of a uh, pulley directly on the motor and then there's a, a little jack shaft here and yet another pulley and another belt here that brings the power up into this gearbox. In order to change the feed rate here, for instance we are currently in position A with this knob and in position 1, it's very hard to read but there's a number 1 over here on this knob. So that is a .44 inches per minute. Let's change it to let's say nine and a half, nine point five four. So we need to move this to C right there and this one to uh, four. Now if the gears do not mesh you may have to turn either this uh, drive shaft here or jog the motor a little bit in order to get the gears to mesh and there is a lock out here so that has to be moved and then I can move it into this number two and there's four and I did have to jog the motor so it's in four and in uh, over here C C4 the gearbox is still set at nine and a half inches feed so when I turn it on, this is the feed engagement lever. So let me turn the machine on and you can see that that's a very fast feed. That's nine and a half inches as I just said. Now to reverse the direction of that, we have a knob right here. And I simply turn that to the opposite direction. You can see that it's moving the other way in the x-axis. 
make sure that you have that feed lever disengaged so that it doesn't come on automatically when you turn the machine on. Also, this handle is very dangerous. If it's in the engaged position and you turn the feed on, this can come around and cause serious injury, especially when you're running at a fast rate. Now, if it's all the way in, you see it doesn't run as fast, but you can put it in the middle, which is the neutral position, and it can't hurt you. So take uh, a warning on that. That can really hurt you. Here's a stop that can be used to turn off the power feed. So there really should be two of these. There's one that's missing. I have to make another one. But move this into whatever position you want it. Lock it down. And when you turn the machine on, and then the power feed, You can see it just turned the power feed off. A nice safety feature. Here's a better view of the feed reverse knob. So now I'm going in one direction. You can't really see the knob, the cranks from where you're at. But by turning that off and turning it in the direct other direction, the table is now moving in the opposite direction. Now you just saw a moment ago how fast nine and a half inches of uh, feed is. That's just way too fast. Probably you'll never use that. A more reasonable one would be the 1.06. So I'll leave this in the four and turn this knob to the A position. And now it will greatly reduce that, well it's only one ninth of what it was. So I'll turn the machine on and you can see how much slower the cranks are moving. And here it is at 1.06 inches per minute. That would probably be a pretty good speed for general cutting. If you're not going to use power feeds, put this knob on any one of the little dots here. Well, there's two dots that are in between the letters there. So I'm in between A and C. That pretty much puts this in the neutral, saves wear and tear on the gears, and possibly reduces noise a little bit. A quick comment about the drum switch on this machine, and I've really never seen one before, and maybe this was made for schools uh, for that reason, so that the kids wouldn't turn the machine into reverse uh, by accident. Most of your cutting is going to be done in the forward position, probably 90% or more, maybe 100%. So it is locked out. In other words, there's forward, and it will not go into reverse until you push this button, and then it'll go into reverse. Similarly, it won't go into forward now until you push the button again. That's really nice. Well, that concludes this video on the controls of the closing horizontal mill. Now even if you have a milling machine of another make or a much larger one, many of the controls and features are similar or can easily be adaptable from what you see here. However, uh, they often will have power feeds in uh, all three axes where this one only has a power feed in the X axis, the longitudinal direction. Also, uh, some of the bigger machines have rapid traverse and different types of speed controls, but essentially a horizontal mill is a horizontal mill. So, hope you enjoy the video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.